Before starting the video, click the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, like, comment and share with other students. Hello and welcome to House of Commerce. So in today's lecture, we are to discuss about adjusting and non-adjusting events and examples with solutions. So stay tuned and watch the whole lecture till end so that you may come to know each and everything about IAS 10. Now what are adjusting events? Events after the reporting period are those events favorable or unfavorable that occurs between the end of the reporting period and the date when the financial statements are authorized for issue. Two types of events can be identified events that provide existence or evidence of conditions that existed at the end of the reporting period and that are adjusting events. Then events that are indicative of conditions that arose after the reporting period means non-adjusting events after the reporting period. Now the question arises what is authorized for issue means? Authorized for issue is generally where the director of the companies have reviewed the financial statements and then instruct that the financial statements can be issued to the shareholders and other entrusted parties. Events after the reporting period that include all the events up to the date when the financial statements are authorized for issue means when the financial statements are prepared at the end of the financial year and that are audited and that are said to be okay to be to be presented to the shareholders and the other concerned parties now what should be the treatment of adjusting and non-adjusting events an entity shall adjust the amount recognized in the financial statement to reflect adjusting events after the reporting period and an entity shall not adjust the amount recognized in the financial statement to reflect non-adjusting events after the reporting period. So this shall be the treatment of adjusting and non-adjusting events. Now let's take a look on few of the examples of adjusting and non-adjusting events. Now here we have a company's financial year and so on 31st December. On 20th December the company was involved in a court case with a customer who sued the company for delivering a product where there was a dispute over the exact ingredient included into the product manufactured by the company. These products were delivered to the customer in October 2013. Do remember one thing that the company's year end is 31st December and the company has delivered the product in October 2013. The details of the case were heard by 22nd December, means this court case was arose on 22nd December, means within the reporting period, by the judge decided to reserve her judgment until 8 January 2014. On 8 January, the judge ruled in favor of the customer, awarding it damages of 100,000. Now the judge has given the judgment after the reporting period but before the financial statements are authorized for issue. This normally takes the tenure of two and a half months until the financial statements are audited and they are authorized for issued by the directors. Now let's take a look on the solution of this question the event took place during the reporting period and the settlement after reporting period of the court case confirms that the company had a present obligation at the year end and or the reporting period the entity adjust any previously recognized provision related to the court case in accordance with IAS 37 provision contingent liabilities and contingent asset or recognize a new provision. Therefore, the company has to adjust 100,000 of the court case because it was an adjusting event. Example number two, Ding Dong Limited has an investment worth 1 million in its financial statement at December 31st, 2013. 
Due to the continuing recession, the investment reduced in value to 900,000 by 15 January 2014. Now the investment has been reduced by 100,000. Now look at this, that the investment is reduced between the financial between the end of the financial reporting period and before the financial statements are authorized for issue but this has a different adjustment now let's take a look on its solution now solution of example number two says the decline in the fair value does not normally relate to the condition of the investment at the end of the financial period but reflects circumstances that has been arisen subsequently. Similarly, the entity does not update the amount disclosed in the investment at, as at the end of the reporting period, although it may need to give an additional disclosure. So this means although this was taken place after the financial year and before the financial statements are authorized for issue, but this does not relate to any condition which was arose before the financial period ends. So this is a non-adjusting event. Now example number three. On 8 January 2014, one of the accountant left Ding Dong suddenly. On further investigation, the company realized that the employee had been paying himself money from the bank account in relation to false rental invoices. The amount of the overstatement was found to be 86,000. With the help of the police, the accountant was tracked down and repaid all the money on 18 January 2014. Now, this incident has taken place before the financial statements are authorized for issue and after the reporting period. Now what should be the answer? Let's take a look. Now its solution says that the discovery of the fraud that shows that the financial statements are incorrect has to be adjusted in the financial statements for the relevant reporting period. Year ended 31st December 2013. At the year end, the rental expense account was are overstated because he used to make false rental invoices and the bank balance from which he used to take the money was understated. Now this has to be correct and this should be adjusted at the end of the financial reporting period. So this is an adjusting event because the evidences of the event was found at the end of the financial reporting period. Example number four. On 10 January 2014, Ting Tong Limited sold some inventory for 80,000. The inventory had been included in the year ended inventory count at the cost of 100,000. Now, what should be the answer of this question? Let's take a look. Now the solution says the sale of investment after the reporting period can give evidence about the naturalizable value of the inventory at the end of the financial reporting period. The inventory's naturalizable value in early January is 80,000 whereas the cost of naturalizable value at 31st December was 100,000. Now Whosoever does not know about how to calculate the inventory and at which amount the inventory should be carried at, you should watch our lecture which is being shown at the above of this video. So naturalizable value and cost. The inventory should be carried at the lower of both of this, whichever is lower. And how to calculate the naturalizable value? Naturalizable value means selling price minus cost to sell. So whichever is lower from NRV or cost, the inventory should be carried at that. Now in this case, using IAS2 inventory rule, that inventory is to be valued at the lower of cost and the naturalizable value. 
the inventory at the year end should be included 80,000 in the financial statement and therefore the financial statement has to be adjusted to reflect this change. Example number 5. A trade receivable which owed Ding Dong Limited 5,000 at the year end was declared bankrupt on 5 January 2014. Ding Dong Limited has no prospect to recovering any amount from the bankrupt customer. Now let's take a look at what does this state. Now the solution of example number 5 says the bankruptcy of the customer that occurs after the reporting period usually confirms that a loss existed at the end of the financial reporting period on a trade receivable. The entity needs to adjust the carrying amount of the trade receivable therefore it is an adjusting event after the reporting period that needs to be reflected in the financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2013. So in this case the company has to reduce its trade receivable by the same amount which was owed means 5000. Going concern. So we have discussed it in our previous lecture while discussing about the accounting concepts. So let us discuss about it again. The going concern means the when the entity assumes that it shall not survive for more than 12, uh, 12 months and less than 12 months. So it shall be determined as not ongoing concern. So what shall be the treatment of this going concern? The entity shall not prepare the financial statements on a going concern basis if the management determines after the reporting period either it that it intends to liquidate the entity or cease trading or that it has no realistic alternatives but to do so. So it shall not prepare any of the financial statements because it has come to know that the entity is, is not on going concern basis. So what shall an entity will do in this case? So in this case IAS 1 specifies required disclosures if the financial statements are not prepared on a going concern basis or the management is aware of the material uncertainties related to the events or conditions that may cast significant doubts upon the entity's ability to continue as a co going concern. The events or condition require disclosures may arise after the reporting period because obviously after preparing the financial statement the company will come to know that either it will survive or not. Disclosures of non-adjusting events. Now what are the disclosure and why does the company need to give the disclosure? If non-adjusting events after the reporting period are material, non-disclosure could influence the economic decisions that user make on the basis of the financial statement accordingly. An entity shall disclose the following of for each material category of non-adjusting events after the reporting period. Number one, the nature of the event and an estimate of its financial effect or a statement that such an estimate cannot be made. Now, a few of the examples of material non-adjusting events after the reporting period that disclosure would be expected are a major combination of entities or disposing of a major subsidiary. So the entity needs to give a disclosure in the financial statement so that it could be presented in front of the shareholders. A plan to discontinue an operation or a major restructuring of an operation. So when an entity closes any of its operation, so the shareholder needs to know about this. Major purchase of asset or the destruction of a major asset by fire or a storm or any of the calamity. So the company has to bring 
into the knowledge of the shareholder about such an event major share transactions so if the company makes any of the transaction any of the investment into the shares so this must also be brought into the knowledge of the shareholders abnormally loud changes in asset prices or foreign exchange rates then changes in tax rates or tax laws that have a major impact on an operation from a tax point of view so it is obvious that the, all the shareholders are not the experts of law and the tax so therefore they need to know about all the changes within the tax rates and the laws then entering into a significant commitment or contingent liabilities so if the company is being involved into any of the case and it need to give any of the obligation arose within the financial reporting period or after the financial reporting period so the company need to give a disclosure upon this that we are involved this in that case and this has to be adjusted therefore the shareholders must know about it then commencing major litigation arising out of the events that occurred solely after the reporting period so whenever there is a litigation arising that should be also told to the shareholders by disclosures so that was all for today's lecture if you had any query regarding the lecture you can put it into the comment section and that shall be answered into the next video till then good luck